Hello everyone, this is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're looking at another one of these awesome Evolution promos that we've just received. And uh, today we're going to have a build around my good friend Quagsire and Naganadel. These two have been paired together for a little bit now, trying to retain energies and flood the board of them to get lots of attackers online. The interesting thing about the Vaporeon in particular is that we already have a water type stage 1 Evolution in the format in Glaceon. And we're thinking that this combination could end up being a powerful one. There's been a successful Japanese list similar to this one with a few different quirks to it. And uh, I'm going to be bringing you my build today. So let's jump into the list. First of all, we're playing four copies of Eevee. By far our best starter because we can use this energy evolution ability to get straight into our stage ones. Most notably the Glaceon in the early game because it can shut down opposing EX and GX abilities which is going to stop the use of Tapu Lele and Zoroark and Alone and Ninetales. And hopefully that means that people get set up a lot less against us. So that's the main sort of concept around having the Glaceon in here. That's going to be the early game wall to slow other decks down. Most notably Zoroark, which is previously a very awkward matchup for Quagnag. And um, then we'll eventually move into the Vaporeon when it can get one hit KO. That is the idea of this build. So... We do have these two Glaceons. That Freezing Gaze is going to shut down GXs and EXs for us whenever this is active, which is awesome. Frost Bullet does 90 and 30 to one of your opponent's bench. So this is pretty nice at dealing with uh, non-evolved Pokemon and also setting up damage for the Polar Spear GX attack, which it also has available to it. It does 50 times the amount of damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon. So you put that 30 on and then you can choice ban this guy and Polar Spear does 180. So you can do 30 into 180, 210 of course, a golden number for lots of stage 1 GXs. Or even just doing the 30 into 150 without the choice band can knock out the likes of Tapu Lele's. So definitely worth noting. Two copies of this awesome Vaporeon GX. It can act as a sort of support Pokemon in this deck when the Glaceon is at his most powerful, which is against Zoroark. Because of its awesome ability, Hydrating Drops. Once during a turn, you may heal 30 from your active water Pokemon. This is obviously stackable, and we play two copies. So in theory, we could have a Glaceon healing 60 damage uh, each turn. And when your opponent's sort of dead drawing and not having many options, this can come in big at times. It's also pretty nice against some sorts of spread variants, getting these extra heals in to reduce the damage that they're doing turn by turn. Speaking of beating spread, his GX attack, Cure Shower, heals all damage from all of your water Pokemon. That's a huge step back for the spread builds, and it's one of the... Uh, you know, without this, it would be a very difficult matchup because we need to fill our board with quags, nags, and ta and attackers. The cure shower makes it much easier for us. And now we have the hydro pump attack as well. When Glaceon isn't too helpful, or when Glaceon has fallen, we can go for hydro pump, doing forty plus thirty more for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. So the requisite energy means that you're doing one thirty, one sixty with band. Slap one more energy on there, and then you're knocking out GXs like the basics. An extra energy, we're knocking out stage 1 GXs. An extra energy, so 6. And we're knocking out uh, even stage 2 GX Pokemon. So the big selling point of Vaporeon in comparison to something like Lapras, which has previously been in uh, Quagnag style builds, is that you can ramp even higher than the Lapras. The Lapras is better at 3 energy, but the Vaporeon can go higher and higher and will get out of control if we're able to get enough energy into play, which is the main concept of this build. So Vaporeon is... A nice sort of slightly tankier than Lapras and is trying to achieve a similar thing but can ramp even harder which is really awesome with that nice support of the ability. Very versatile card overall. From there we're going to have a 3-3 line of the Quagsire. We want to get this washout developed as quickly as possible because we're not playing DCE so we can't frost bullet turn 2 unless we get the help of Quagsire online as well as, well as Naganadel or Aqua Patches. So this washout allows us to move all the energy from the bench into the active position so we can do some nice retreat shenanigans between our evolutions if we want to, get all of our different attackers rolling, and the whole idea is that we're going to spam energy with Naga and then throw it into the active for our attacks, and that's really awesome. He can also attack if we need him to in non-GX matchups, doing 60 plus 20 times the amount of water attached to him. Not quite as powerful as Vaporeon's, but again, he's a non-GX, so in a non-GX war, he ain't too shabby. From there, we're going to have a 2-2 line of the Naganadel. I've tinkered around with 2-2 and 3-3. I think overall for bench space purposes, I like 2-2. It is a little awkward if you prize one of them, but overall this guy is the thing retaining our energies for the majority of the game. Charging up gets an basic energy from the discard pile onto him every single turn. That's going to be awesome for us. We also now gain Psychic Typing, which is actually quite helpful. Turning point doing 80 for 3 colorless and 80 more if we 
uh, on three prizes that turn. So slap a choice band on on the turning point turn, and we're knocking out GXs again. And uh, against Psychic Weak Pokemon, we can just slap a choice band on at any point in the game, and turning point will be one shotting them, which is really awesome. We're going to have one Ditto Prism Star, which acts as the basic for all of these guys. And when you're playing three stage ones, it's a no brainer to have him in the deck. One copy of Tapu Lele to have some searchable supporter cards for us for extra consistency. And it's always good to bear in mind that we can wash out a bunch of energies onto Lele and get one shots as well. From there, we're going to have two copies of a Rescue Stretcher to recover some of the thinner lines, especially the Nags and the 2 2 of Vaporeon and Glaceon is a little risky. So we want to have two stretchers to recover these at the right time, depending on which matchup we're in. Two copies of Aqua Patch. I feel like it does protect us a little bit if Poipoles are going to get targeted early. Or if we just can't search them out early enough, Aqua Patch gives us a little bit of extra burst here and there to maintain our attacks. I wish I had space for more, but ultimately the Nag in general is doing the most recharging. This is just a little extra help, mainly for the early turns. And uh, four copies of the Ball Search cards, Nest and Ultra, because we want to really spam our field with all of these Stage 1s. We want to get a couple Whoopers down, at least a Poipole, a Ditto, and at least one Eevee as well. So we really want to go whoosh with our board straight away and get a bunch on the board. So... These are going to be maxed out for sure. Ultra Ball obviously having synergy with our water energies in the bin as well. Two copies of Ultra Space. I've chosen to go for the thicker Quag and then have the Ultra Space rather than having the thicker Nag and the Brooklet Hill. The main reason is because Ultra Space can also help you grab your Naganadols as well as the Poipoles. So it's more versatile and more helpful overall. And even in mid-game stages when you have, you know, no space for the uh, Naganadels on the board physically, you can still be pulling out excess Poipoles and Naganadels just to thin your hand, or sorry, thin your deck for better draws. So I like the Ultra Space. I think it's overall a more powerful card. And less decks are using this, and other decks can benefit from Brooklet Hill more. So I want to have the Ultra Space uh, instead. Two copies of Sophocles. I wanted to buffer the support accounts in this deck, and I felt Sophocles fit this nice role. We've seen how a two of copy has become more and more standard in the Cephalon builds, and the same reason applies here. We're trying to take advantage of Nag and uh, Aqua Patch, so Sophocles seems to fit the role here to discard two and draw four. It just seems reasonable to keep our hand size fresh and have ten total supporter cards to keep us drawing when we are multiple stage ones. I feel like that's important. At one stage, I've just had multiple Acro Bikes, and I felt like I was just bricking a little bit too much, so I wanted to just add in an extra supporter card that just gets more powerful effects off for Cynthia and for Lily obviously Lily great early game and Cynthia great throughout and just two copies of Guzma it's a little bit cheeky I've seen the Japanese list play this and I've tried to follow suit I think you can just about get away with it because we're so focused on getting our combo and um, I feel we just have to take big one hit KOs when we need to with our Vaporeon it does make us a little bit vulnerable when we can't target down some certain, some certain targets but overall I feel like we don't really want to cut any consistency cards from this deck at all because you'll just start crumbling, to be honest. I'm playing Choice Bands in my list, two copies. I've said how it can be really helpful with the Nags. I think it makes the Vaporeon much more realistic as a one-hit KO merchant, which is important. I've seen the Japanese list that played Dumbbells and Choice Helmets to try and be more tanky with your Stage 1 evolutions. But overall, I think I'd rather just be trying to dig for one-shots. And it also lets the Nagger into the game a lot more on turning point turns which is also pretty valuable in my eyes. Finally, 12 Water Energy. Should be plenty to see lots of them, bin them early, attach them early, all that good stuff. I think that's going to be plenty. On to cards that we could be playing. Uh, Volcanian Prism Star is a big surprise to me that I'm not playing the card because I'm a massive fan of this guy. Um, I've played him in a lot of my Lapras builds. He's pretty much the thing holding Lapras together, to be honest. Jet Geyser has extra synergy for discarding waters. Sauna Blast is huge value for what he does and has 160 hit points, so he's just tanky. Overall, the card in a vacuum is incredible. I'm not going to argue that. My main argument for not having him in this list is we want Glaceon up front and center as quickly as possible just to slow people down. Um, so rather than trying to go for Sauna Blast, which is good pressure, we're trying to lock people out as much as possible. Um, the other card I could consider is, of course, Lapras uh, himself because it just has the slightly more efficient blizzard burn than the uh, Vaporeon in certain situations. And if you are trading only against basic GXs, the Lapras is slightly better. And of course, again, collect just for that get out of jail free option that you could be uh, looking for. Uh, Acrobikes is a card that I've had in all my Lapras builds. I do really like it, but I think in this case where we're so reliant on multiple stage ones, instead of just getting out Quagsire or just Quag and Nag, um, this time I'm trying to get all three stage ones up. 
and I feel like we don't have really the space to trim down our support account to add in the acros. It didn't really make sense to me. It was like you're cutting supporter cards to then add in acrobites, which are yes, trying to do the same dig, and yes, you like the extra discards here and there, but I think um, you just want to have more impact in your hand than the acrobites, which is just a, a tiny dig here and there. And we don't have space for four copies, so it doesn't really make as much sense to me. Uh, the other things we could be thinking about is the likes of EXP Share or Wishful Baton um, to, again, flood the board of energies, and then for certain your Vaporeon will be coming in and swinging for one hit KOs. <clears throat> I can definitely foresee wiggling in a couple copies of those, but no more than that. Again, my mentality is just try and get the Pokemon on the board in the first place, and that'll give us the highest win rate out of anything else. Uh, from there, I think a couple supporter cards we could consider, like Sightseer, Ingo and Emmett when it comes out can team up. But at the moment, I'm sticking with Sophocles, uh, just based on how it's seen success in the uh, Bacephalon builds. So we're going to jump into the ladder and see how this deck performs. <clears throat> so far, I've had pretty mixed results with this deck. There are times when Glaceon just shuts people down. There are times when we have we don't quite like fulfill our combo, <clears throat> and uh, it does feel a little bit hit and miss. So I don't really foresee this deck being the best. But there are selling points to the Glaceon for sure. Not leading a uh, an EV here is a bit sad, but we have lots of lots of pokemon search that's basically our entire hand what do we want to lead with here i think we lead poipol because we already have ultra space and ditto and Wooper. okay we're kind of looking for a supporter early for sure this is why we play 10 and ultra balls and lele so we have 15 out to try and hit supporter turn one which does give us good odds but nothing yet we're up against a buzz rock, it looks like. Hmm. We do have our Naga army, which can be nice against buzz walls. They're going to grab Diancie out the gate. So they want to pressurize as much as they can with Jet Punch. <coughs> which does make good sense. They're going to get a big Lily off. No energies from them just yet. There we go. Is he ditto? So it's probably a build that's also playing um, Nine Tails, I would imagine. Yeah, there we go. We know it. We scouted him out. Okay, treasure. Is he going to let loose? Yes, he is. We will take this. We will definitely take this. Take it and run. Nice. Got a supporter. Ha ha. Saved by the let loose. So he can get value out of Ultra Space. We have prized one nag, which is definitely worth noting. Uh, but we just want to get an extra Poipal on the board because he's already threatening just a Lysia or a Kakui or something to get a one-shot. We have Ultra Ball. We can get rid of a couple of waters, which I definitely appreciate. Uh, we've actually prized our Lele, which really sucks. So we're just going to grab Eevee here and attach to it and get a stage one up. I think we want to get the Vaporeon up and running. And because we don't have any Quagsire, I think we will Aqua Patch to it straight out the gate. If we had a better hand, I wouldn't do this, but I think we sort of have to. This can get punished by him Lycan Rocking and trying to get an early swing on the Vaporeon, but I think we have to allow it. We have to assume that this goes down, I think. It's pretty rough that we prized the Lele. But at the same time, we got let out of a pretty grim hand from a let loose in the first place. So we'll see how the let loose fared for him. Attaching to Rock Ruff straight out the gate is pretty powerful, pretty scary. Seeing that we have four bench Pokemon. And he has that Diancy to push him into one shot range. It does mean that he needs to Kikui if he wants to take a knockout though. 
No, just get punch. In the 50 30. You get nest ball, it's an ultra space. So we're just going to charge up, retreat, attach the Vaporeon, heal, and start swinging. We need to access our prize cards to draw more. We can heal this damage. We probably should have put the spread on something like the Ditto. Uh, don't We do want to Nest Ball, then we don't. It's kind of weak to um, his Jet Punch attack, but I guess we're trying to two-shot him. He should spin the deck, to be honest. Let's just grab another Eevee. We're already playing into Lichen Rock, so we may as well swing here. Try and get into that Lele that's sat in the prizes. This deck could attempt some shenanigans to jump over Beast Ring because we technically do have the. Uh... Oh boy, can he get the? No, 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 no. Looks like he's trying to draw cards. Yeah, he's judging us. We'll take it. He needs to hit. Wow, he's already got rid of three Ultra Balls. He's not that likely. He also plays Weavile. Wow, he's got it all going on in here. I guess if he's already playing units, you just play one Weavile. We are very ability focused. We've already got four on our board. Is he going to be using Wild Kick here? Yeah, it looks like he whiffed. That's pretty big for us. Gets us right back into this game. Now we do have our other Vaporeon in the deck if we think it's better than Glaceon. The Glaceon shuts down his low and nine tails, which might be his way out of this crummy hand. But I do think we like doing one shots. At the same time, the nine tail, the uh, Glaceon can finish this off and start putting damage on some of this other stuff. I don't mind just putting this down. It makes our Lily stronger, which I think we're going for this turn. We don't have any uh, target for Ultra Space, so we're not going to reveal that information to him. We're just going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to take our first prize here. Still a little bit concerned by the Weavile that can come up. Because we weren't able to evolve Ditto. Even if we could evolve Ditto, all of our evolutions have abilities. So yeah, it looks like he does Weavile. He's going to put Booklet Hill into play. Is he going to go ahead and grab Baby Bugs? Expecting us to knock this out, maybe. Nope, he's going to Wonder Tag. Okay, just trying to get rid of Ultra Space, it looks like. I don't think he used that Ultra Space once, did he? Looks like he's going to grab that Cynthia. There's the unit choice band for no real. Oh yeah, he does need the choice band. Nice. So we need to find ourselves a Quagsire if we promote the Glaceon, like a brave person. We could promote the Nag like a less brave person, and we can just Aqua Patch attach and retreat and charge up. I think that's the best move. We're going to pull out the Wooper, and we'll evolve the Ditto. I think. I don't think I want to Sophocles away and energy. I think I want to get rid of Lily and Eevee. So we can attach, patch. Retreat 
street charge. We're holding the Guzma in hand for when we put this to 30 this turn. And then we can do a Guzma play, knocking out like Marshadow and this guy at the same time, if he doesn't evolve the Vulpix. I guess he won't because of uh, Freezing Gaze that we have active. I think I want to want to develop a Quagsire, but we don't really need to this turn, do we? No, we can just uh, deal with the big threat that is the Weavile. We haven't had, oh, second Nag is really nice. No real sign of uh, baby bug just yet, but he might do some switch shenanigans. It's also B-string time, so things are going to heat up. Go and active to get the knockout here, which makes sense. We are scared if he gets another B-string, but the Glaceon active blocks his Alolan Tails from finding him any more. He just has to absorption GX. So we can get Quag, charge up, Guzma this, and hit it for 90 30. Do I want to Guzma the Lele instead? I haven't played any Guzmas. We do have both. The Nag can one-shot the Buzz Ball anyway if we find Choice Band, so I think that's the best route. We want to hit the Lele. Or I could hit the Diancie and just slow him down. Then I would still need Guzma on Marshadow for the last two prizes on the Diancie. Yeah, that forced him to find Switch or Guzma, either of which is good for us. this we've got our charge ups I think we can happily pull our last whooper out um, thinking if we want to put the EV down instead pull out the Vaporeon from the deck also fine. Oh no, it gives him Guzma plays. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. We don't mind it. Okay. So we'll do this. If I attach, the Ultra Ball needs to get rid of Stretcher Lily, which is fine. Here. We fortunately have our Guzma at the right moment. Let's get rid of these. Grab Quag. I think the Diancy is the correct move. He's played a switch. He's played two Guzmas. We're targeting the Vulpix here, I think. Oh no, no, we're knocking out the Buzzwall, obviously. <laughs> Don't talk crazy. see what he can do about this route. Should be pretty tricky for him. We still have our two choice bands rooting around. If he wants to attack us with a buzz wall, it's going to be under pressure. He can't really attack us with a non-GX because this is 30 left now and just plays into Frost Bullet for game. I guess his non-GX has to have more than 90 hit points. Instead he's going to pull out another big daddy buzz. Beast energy. If 
take you as much. I think we'd be more scared if he just passed and didn't take Uzma and just had another attachment for next turn and could have just won. Actually, he would still need choice land. Yeah. The Glaceon and Vaporeon are just tanky, right? They're too tanky. If we win on board, 3, 6, 9, 12, 16 with the Nag. Yeah, we have game. I guess he couldn't do the two turn attach thing because we're too tanky. Too tanky. Feels good. I think we can credit Glaceon a little bit for him never evolving his Vulpix because there was a couple key turns where he could have dug for more B strings and we would have been in bad shape, but now we're not in bad shape. 6-3 is 180. So we're doing 220. Nice, nice first win against Buzz. That's always comforting. Didn't have to use the Nag once. We just used our EV army. But the army got on board and we got to do our stuff, which is nice. We ended up with six energy on the board. And that's why Vaporeon can be pretty sweet. Meal. Oh, Rush Nest a fire deck. This could be good. What an interesting hand. That's a poker hand. No energy in this hand. Interesting. We've also led double Glaceon in our opener, which really hurts if we wanted to get a turn one lock on someone. Looks like they're Blacephalon anyway. Blacephalon, like it would be nice to Glaceon the Blacephalon because we already one shot them so easily. But this is, oh, we drew energy as well. This is definitely a matchup where we want to get the Quag army out. We have two Whoopers and Ditto, which is good to know. We are giving him a bit of help by putting the Ultra Space straight into play, but we don't really mind that. We're going to go ahead and grab our Vape Nation straight away. I think I'm pretty happy to discard two Glaceon here just to improve our Lily. Uh, we also want to establish that Wooper straight out the gate. I think because we already have our other Vaporeon and we will be attacking with Quag in this matchup. It makes the most sense. Choice band doesn't make a huge amount of sense on any of our water dudes, so we'll put it on the Poipol. Couple of nest ball is pretty perfect. We'll grab another whoop. Ultra space is going to stay in game for the majority of the time, so I think we will uh, not grab a Poipol. I think we'll just grab a Ditto, maybe, or another. Yeah, we'll grab another Eevee. Pretty good turn, no water in our discard pile. We'd love to draw something like an Ultra Ball off the top. That would make everyone happier. But not a bad start for us. One awkward thing about using Energy Evolution is he could just use a Bursting Burn next turn, or this turn. Which would be a little annoying. We could Hydrating Drops off the damage, so it wouldn't be relevant in that regard. He'd just be trying to slow us down. Kind of depends on how many Poipol he develops. There's also the chance for him to do some Let Loose shenanigans on us, like the Buzzmore player did. Oh, wow. He's just not even scared. He's just going to burst. That's pretty good for us. That's actually really good for us. Uh, so this way we don't need to grab, we don't need to find Aqua Patch. So we'll do this. And we'll do this. We'll attach one energy here. And we'll Cynthia hoping to hit Ultra Ball and back into a water energy. That's the dream. No water energy. Feels bad, man. We've got to pass. 
That's rough. That's really rough. You can't ramp to a one hit KO, I don't think, without beast energy choice ban. He has no energy in his discard pile and he was supportive us. So maybe I shouldn't be complaining too much about my hands. He's going to pull out another Decephalon. The fact that he's doing that over Poipol tells me that he has Beast Rings galore in his hand. <laughs> Basically. That's what he's holding on to. He has Sights here. Maybe we'll see a little bit more here. Oh, he was he had two supporters and chose not to play one turn one. That's really weird. He's gonna charging up, get another attachment in, and now he's gonna use Bursting Burn. Okay, this is frustrating for sure. We're going to pull out Poipol and just discard it. I'm not going to get rid of the Ultra Space because I'd rather get rid of the other stadium when it comes down. We can grab the Quag and then Nest Ball for the Ditto. And we've got three draws with now. Hit some energy cards. Huzzah. We have a 50 50. Uh, take a knockout or not take the knockout. We have Aqua Patch and Nag already developed on board. So if we whiff, we just go Wonder Tag, Supporter, find one energy and still respond. I could attach, retreat, charge up, rain splash with choice band for 100. Guaranteed 100 isn't too bad, but we're looking to one-shot almost every time here. If we flip tails, he gets the initiative of two prizes, then we come in, two prizes, then he comes in, B-strings, two prizes. Pretty awkward. I think we're flipping a coin here. We can try and sway, like swing the match back in our favor if we flip tails on this, just with attacking with Quagsires. This is okay. We've we've assessed our options, and I think even if he is just beast ring spamming after he gets ahead, we're gonna throw the army of non GXs in his face. So I think I can live with this. Just. And if we flip heads, we like always win. So. I think you're allowed to take these risks when you know we still have a backup strategy. There is the beast energy. Doesn't change his math too much here. We might just have to get rid of it. I need to hold it. Fair cop. Oh, I guess it's because PTGO is broken, right? Okay. Fair for revenge of Quag. Actually, we don't even need energy, do we? We have the double nag to play. So, we have the response knockout on a non with a non GX. This is where the matchup comes a little bit more in our favor. I mean, he can B string respond, and then if he hits enough B strings, he could have range of the Vaporeon. So, it's not like we're just going to straight up win, but. Um, Feels fine. I'm glad we drew Sophocles as well. It means I don't have to commit a Lele to this board, which is very scary. So we're going to Sophocles away the Lele, I think. I just really don't want him to have Heat Factory for like a good portion of the game, especially when he has no fire in his bin. Let's... Do I need Rescue Stretcher either? I'm, I'll need it for my next Quag. So I think we get rid of Choice Band Lele. A little risky if we don't hit a supporter, but we hit energy and we hit Quagsire, which is, oh no, we, we want to put a whooper down, I think, because we already have the stretcher for Quag. 
Oh, okay. So we'll be scratching a whooper. Aha. Perfect. Let's do our washouts. And we'll hydro pump. So the question is, how many B strings you got in your hand, bro? He chose not to Cynthia and he used Sightseer last turn, which tells me there's at least one in there. If there's two, we are still a little concerned, especially if he's able to um, do some shenanigans with uh, what you want to call it. Guzma. It is his turning point turn, of course, so he can use the nag to take a knockout. He's doing all of this pre B string, so that tells me he actually has none, which is good at the moment. Chooses not to do it on the active, so he can do it on the bench one. Okay. So maybe he does have rings. Oh, maybe he was doing the acrobats trying to hit fire energies for more charge ups. That work. That's that makes sense to me. Okay, that's fair. Yep. I imagine these two have been in his hand for a long time. Oh boy, all game those beast rings have been in his hand for. What we don't want to see is him bench another Bicephalon and, and attach a manual energy to it. That's when we get very scared. Oh boy. Oh, that's even scarier. <laughs> Hitting all four B-strings is hard to come back from. <laughs> oh, boy. So, is his last card in hand Guzma? Or are his, is his one prize a Guzma? That's what we've got to be afraid of. We have to stretch it back Lele for Guzma. By the way, that's why we're promoting this boy. He does put us pretty all in. Because we don't have Whoop Troop anymore. So we also need to try and find our Active faction next turn. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Well, B-string is hard to come back from, huh? We do this. We do this. We grab Guzma. Have we played one Aqua Patch so far? Yeah, we've played one of our this is scary for sure because we're sacking our only quagums life does get pretty scary basically next turn well if he doesn't have guzma we need to uh We need to Cynthia into Aqua Patch energy. So we can do more charge ups. Let him 
paranoid about Heat Factory all game and haven't seen it, which is a bit annoying. And now he basically has no energy left. <laughs> Look at that army of nags, it's beautiful. Got rid of treasure? Has he prized his Lele? Or has he already got game? Yeah, that's game. Oh boy, four B strings is rough. <laughs> Let's let him do a million damage. He's earned it. He's earned the right. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Oh, boy. Well, he did flip tails on a attack, but still. He did pretty well to win that game. Let's get one more in and see how we can... Uh, how we can go with this deck. So far we've done well at getting nags and quags on board in, in plenty of numbers. So that gives me encouragement. Also remember that that game we, uh, what did we do? We didn't have our Glaceon access, which would have shut down some Lele Shenans from him. Not that he used them, but yeah. What are we going to mull? We also missed an energy on a crucial turn. Mm. Two things went very wrong for us. A, a whiffed energy into a confusion tails to lose that game after he got four B strings. <laughs> I feel like it wasn't meant to be. But the matchup should be very favorable. Like he should really lose that game. Ugh, yikes. We keep get out of my hand, you boys. Stay in the deck. So annoying. Why don't you just E these? I think it's a spread matchup. Oh, hey. Uh, we actually do hit Ultra Ball, which is really nice. Um, against a spread deck, we don't want to Glaceon. We just want to vape him. We want to get double vape, taking a prize every turn and healing every turn. That sounds like the best move to me. Got a good deck. Cheers. I'm gonna heal. Good luck. I'm not gonna stretch her back. Glaceon, we need it for the vapes. Ugh, yikes. All the energy cards. That can happen. We play 12 after all. Crushing hammer. Yikers. Don't hate that. <laughs> we have eight cards and we don't hate that. So let's save our ultra spaces for um, for shrines. No on the old aqua patch front. Gross. I think I might let his Latios knock out my Lele. Shuts down all of his counter energies, which is nice. I mean, I say let, I mean, like, we might just have to let him do it. But I'm thinking we can just have two Vaporeons up using hydrating drops all the time and he can't do much. Scared of some hammers coming down. If he plays hammers, does that mean he's not playing the Persimian guys? Ooh, double tails is rough. Just gonna try and make a breakthrough.
having the debate now whether uh, whether it's best to bench Poipol and search out a Wooper. And then next turn we could Ultra Space pull a card and then Ultra Ball for Naga Quag and guarantee attacks. I think that quick discussion with myself told me yes. Oh no, we won't be able to have enough cards for the Ultra Ball. Okay, we'll pass. I guess if he is going to move into Flying Flips, he has to retreat out and uh, we can already cure Shower with the Wooper. So it's not really too big of a deal. That's rough. Finding water energy would be nice. Or a supporter. One of those. Let's go. Interesting to hit the whooper. Oh boy, nice. I feel like, especially for him not playing for Simeon, this plays into our hands like pretty nicely, to be honest. I assume there's no Simeon, because who has space for Simeon and Crushing Hammers? Not me. That's for sure. He's decided against taking the Lele. He's just going to let the Shrine deal with it, which is fair play. He smoothed over a card, so I imagine it's Lily, so he can smooth over again and get whatever he wants. Which is, I don't know, is it energy removal cards? Is it backup Coco at this point? I don't really know what he needs. Cargo. Yeah, that's fair. If you don't know what you want, just get another Mad Cargo. <laughs> He's also playing Pseudo Widow. Finally gets the heads. But it's at a time where we can get a Quagsire now. Unfortunate for him. Weird that he plays Flip and Pseudo Wudo. I guess this is this is more of a tech for Zoroark, I guess. Usually you want people to bench stuff all the time. Also interesting that he's trying to save the counter energy when he's about to take two prizes. He should have attacked with this one. Unless he's planning on doing some electro balls. Oh, he just draw the quag, happy days. Charge up. Let's wash ourselves out. Let's do some hydrating drops. And we'll take some more prizes. Another little whoopums. The only thing we have to be a little concerned about is when he does his magical swap turn. Like, we need to cure shower the turn before we think that he'll do it. <laughs> Which was a strange sentence to say out loud, and I'm sorry you had to hear it. But you know what I mean, right? He's put himself in a weird spot by not attacking with this one last turn. Crumbs. Maria, sure. 
that actually stops me from uh, retreating this turn and healing this guy twice for maximum heal value. He's having to smooth over a, another energy to the top here to do a flying flip. He's just doing a crushing hammer. Is he passing? Has he done a no-no? Looks like he's done a no-no. Yikes. Wait. Was, was is this? He's going to start going aggro monkey. Has 150, 160, 170, 180, 190. Uh, even after the hydrating drops, because there'll be one more here and one more here. Um, 190 doesn't do much scary stuff with Lele just yet, so I think we can still wait, do our drops, and just uh, wait for knockout. We are keeping an eye on when we can do our retreat and start healing this Vaporeon a little bit more. energy is alive again. But we're seeing Vaporeon in action with its healy annoying stuffs. smooth over. Not really scared of any stall when we have washout. Not really scared of a Ranguru. We could just retreat uh, Cure Shower. Don't judge us. Sure. Seems okay. I could have been thinning those balls, but I was waiting for stuff like Sophocles to turn up. See those Guru Smacks? Yeah, okay. Guru Smack is okay. This is our this is our cure shower turn for sure. Especially when we have Guru, it makes sense. up this guy. Uh, it's pretty annoying for him, I would imagine. Guzma, that's good. He has to lower his hand size now to try and smooth over and instruct into the one switch card that they normally play. Yeah, he's whiffed. surplus of energy going on here. And it is pretty much just grim for the spread decks. I think if you play Pasimian it would be closer. The energy removal just isn't doing anything against Quagnag. 
we've won out that war. We have seven energy on the board. Which feels pretty futile at this point. Even if a Ranguru doing 120 gets healed by 60. It's just mean. It's just mean spirited from me. Yeah, that'll do that. So we got to see a couple things in action there. We got to see the Glaceon slowing down the Boswell player by not letting him use a lower nine tails to stop B strings. We somehow lost to the clowns, uh, but they had some nice turns and we got a little little clunky. And that does demonstrate an issue with the deck that so, like we need to have Quag, Nag, Energy Discard, Energy Hand every single turn. Uh, well, in the opening turns, and that doesn't always happen. So it does show the kind of like weakness of the deck, of that it is quite combo reliant. Um, and then we saw how devastating Vaporeon is against spread decks. It really is a pain. <laughs> Just so difficult for the spread to deal with. So yeah, that was good. Let me know what you think about the list. What do you think about the uh, archetype? Do you think Vaporeon, uh, how do you think it ranks against its other two evolutions? Will Glaceon see any more play now thanks to this guy? Which one is going to be the thicker line? Which one's going to be the main attacker? Which is going to be the backup? I'd love to hear your discussion down below. For now, though, it has been Joe from Omnipoke, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.